So, I am a woman of many interests, and besides microphones, I also don't like clocks. <laughs> because when they make that stupid ticking noise, it feels like that noise on that clock is rushing me, reminding me that I need to be on pursuit of success and opportunity. The only time that I have ever been free of that relentless secondhand, the shower. So, in June before my sophomore year of college, I was in the shower. I was singing, enjoying the moment when I made a discovery. Uh, a lump in the middle of my right breast. So, preferring solution-oriented thinking, I sprung to action, and I wasted no time. You see, I was a planner. I mean, I literally had three calendars. So I spent the rest of that summer scheduling, planning, and organizing all of the programs I had coming up in the new school year. Planning so much that I decided that my unexpected lump could wait for three months. So, three months later in September, I found myself lost in details. I was starting a new program through the Student Alumni Council, I was working at the Medical Center, I was beginning research, and I needed a break. I needed time. So at that point, I cracked. I was so overwhelmed with uncertainty and fear that I didn't know what to do. So I took the only logical next step I could think of. I called a doctor who, concerned, sent me to another doctor who sent me to an imaging center who sent me to a physician who all said the same thing. Marissa, you have a tumor. So, still preferring solution-oriented thinking, I said, okay, what are we going to do about it? And they said, nothing. Nothing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> My tumor has been deemed as that which is believed to be statistically benign or something that isn't concerning enough to do anything about right now, but certainly isn't a small enough concern to wait on. So, what do you do when it's assumed that you're fine? That you're maybe okay? You wait. You are there without plans, without solution-oriented thinking, and only with time. Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines the word interim as a period between events or an intervening time, and typically in connotation is used to refer to periods that are glossed over and say no movement of action or note has occurred here. But I live in the interim. I am between knowing for certain if I'm going to be okay and not knowing that at all, and certainly I have been confused and I have been angry. And for a while, I would shrug and I would say things like, hey, stuff happens, right? I'll get through it. I don't even know what's going on right now. I'll be stronger in the end. And maybe that's the case. But in saying that, I denied myself the opportunity to live with and work through that uncertainty and pain and fear I was feeling. When we reflect on our lives, we tend to view them as a series of achievements. You did this, you wrote that, you traveled here. But what about everything else? What about when you stayed up all night to finish those winning scholarship essays or worked extra shifts to save for that plane ticket? We spend so much time thinking about that which lies ahead, the next accomplish accomplishments we can add to our resumes, or the next adventures we can take. And those are certainly the things that add the much needed and desired variety in our lives. But what about everything else? Because most of this time, you're not standing on a stage winning an award or on a plane to an exotic country. Most of the time, you're in between that. Really, in every part of your life, you will experience an interim, whether it be in your health, your relationships, your career, or anything else. And for those of us that are students, we're in one right now. College itself is an interim process. We come here not fully sure or aware of what we want to do, or who we want to be, or even where we're going after graduation. Many of us don't know what it is that will give us those feelings of success and security that we are consistently supposed to be striving for. 
So since we don't know what we're looking for in our future selves, we try to find ourselves through planning. We take classes in diverse subject matters, we go to group meetings to try new things, we take personality quizzes on BuzzFeed, and we try, perhaps in vain, to foresee our futures. Now don't get me wrong, scheduling and planning out the details of my life are two things that I still try to do, but lately I've come to regard that as a little bit arrogant. Who am I to believe that I, one person, can have control over that which determines what runs the second hand on my clock? There is something extremely humbling about living in the interim. Because when you don't know the future, and you're finished with the past, all you have is the present. I still have a tumor. There are aspects of my life and all of yours that are opaque, and I found that it is this uncertainty and this ambiguity that unites us. We are all made human in the fact that we don't know what is coming next. I challenge you to look at your life right now and understand that whatever interim you're facing is what will shape you and make you better for the future. Here, the interim, the time between our list of accomplishments, the time after your last roadblock, and the time before your next adventure is what makes you who you are. Because here, in the present, is when we can string together our emotions, snapshot by snapshot, and understand who we are. This, the interim, is where we should live. Thank you.